This is video 23 in our series Topics in Tensor Analysis. Uh, in the last video, we had examined the derivatives of vectors or tensors and asked ourselves, do they transform like a tensor? And the answer was no. We demonstrated that starting with the Cartesian system and then working with the curvilinear coordinate system. And, and in this video, we're going to do exactly the same thing, except that we're going to work with one curvilinear coordinate system and transforming into another curvilinear coordinate system. So really, it's, it's not going to be anything different than what we did in the previous video. The reason we're doing it is um, in this system here, we have to use different labels. And part of the problem in working with this stuff in the abstract is just getting used to the machinery of um, sort of manipulating the different symbols around. And really, that's all we're going to be doing in this video. Now, in the last video then, when we had a vector in the x-coordinate system, we'd say it's vector x, and we'd have a certain component that we're designating, or in the y-coordinate system, we'd say vector y, so that we know that we're in the y-curvilinear system, and we have a certain component. And then we were taking derivatives of the components with respect to each one of the coordinate axes. And of course, the coordinate axes are always labeled with a superscript. Here we're taking partial derivatives, specifically of covariant components, with respect to a coordinate axis over here in the curvilinear coordinate system. And it's exactly the same type of setup here. Here we're in a curvilinear coordinate system with axis u1, u2, u3, and so forth. Over here, we would have u prime 1 u prime 2, u prime 3, and so forth. Now here we would have a vector v in our unprime system, and over here in our prime system. Now if we wanted to, we could say v and then a certain component of it i. Over here a certain component j, covariant components. And we could say u and u prime. Usually that's not done in the textbooks, though. It's just simply the prime here is to indicate that we're in the u prime system. And with no prime mark, then we're just in the u system. And they don't include these in the labeling. So we'll go ahead and follow that convention. The question then is, if we have a vector in this curvilinear coordinate system, we're considering its covariant components. And that same vector, that same physical entity, is also expressed in this curvilinear coordinate system with its covariant components. And since this is a true vector, it will transform from this curvilinear system into this curvilinear system the way that you would expect a covariant vector to transform, as we demonstrated in the uh, previous videos. Now. If we take the derivatives of each component of the vector with respect to each one of the u coordinate axis, that gives us a d squared number of terms, assuming now we're in d dimensional space, just as we did in the last video. Then over here, we can do the same thing. Take partial derivatives of the covariant components with respect to each one of the u primed axis to give us a d squared number of terms. And in each case, of course, the terms are partial derivatives that we obtained. And the question is, do, are these partial derivatives, these d squared number of them, do they form another vector or another tensor? Well, if they do, then these components should transform into these components exactly the way that a covariant tensor transforms, if indeed they do form a tensor. 
So our question then is this. Here we have the derivatives in the prime system. Here we have the derivatives in the unprimed system. Do they transform like this? If they do, then indeed these form the components of a covariant tensor. But we don't know whether this equation is true. Now here we're labeling things a little bit different, so let's just take a look at what this equation is. Here we have the partial u prime l. It's in the denominator here, so it should be in the denominator of this side of the equation, which indeed it is. Here now we're going to be taking partial u prime, or the prime system, and it is a k component of it, so it's going to carry the k label, but it should carry the k label in the denominator, because it's in a subscript here. And here it is in the denominator. Now over here on this side, here we have partial vi with respect to uj. If this is now transforming according to the pattern of covariant tensor transformation, these have to be repeated labels. So here then this should appear upstairs, and it does. Now this means that we're going to be taking partial derivatives of u, we're in the unprimed system now, and they have to carry the i label. But here it's a subscript, so it's going to be a repeated index. It should appear in the numerator. And indeed, it does. So here's the repeated indexes. Upstairs, downstairs, downstairs, upstairs. So that's the general um, pattern of how uh, covariant tensors transform. And again, we've covered that in quite a bit of detail um, in the previous videos. Now, what we don't know is whether this equation is true. So let's look at it. Again, these can cancel out. So the equation then can be written like this. Does that equal these cancel? So we have the partial of ui with respect to u prime k. Then here we have partial vi component with respect to u prime l, since these cancel out. OK. Now we don't know again whether this equation is true, but we do know that this Since the v prime is a genuine vector, then we can say that, well, we can write it like this if we want to. Where these are covariant components. Here they are in the unprimed system. Here are the covariant components in the prime system, and this is how covariant components transform from one curvilinear system to another curvilinear system. Again, as we discussed uh, quite a bit detail in the, uh, the earlier videos. So here, we're taking a partial with respect to u prime l of this, but if we want to, we can substitute this for this. So let's do that and see what kind of an expression we get. So we're taking the partial with respect to u prime l of v k prime, that's this, partial u i with respect to u prime k v i. 
and does that equal the right hand side of the equation. Well here we're taking now a derivative of a product. So let's hold this constant and take this derivative. So we'll have the partial squared u prime l of ui partial u prime k vi. So all we do is hold this constant then take this partial derivative which gives us this expression. Then we have plus keep this constant and now take this derivative. So the partial vi with respect to u prime l. And does this equal the right hand side of the equation? Let me try to put this in better focus. Okay, so here we're taking the derivative of a product that gives us this expression and the right hand side is this. But if we look at it we see well this term and this term are the same but on this side of the equation we have this extra term. So these are not equal so we go back to the top of the board and that means then that this equation is not true. So again, what it means is that when you have a vector, a genuine vector, here we're considering covariant components of it. If you take the derivatives, these derivatives then do not form the components of a tensor. If they did, this equation would have come out to be true. It did not because, again, it's this extra term that gets picked up, just like happened in the in the previous video. Well, in the previous video, we were starting with Cartesian coordinates and then going over to curvilinear coordinates. Here, we just considered a more general aspect of the same problem: a vector in one curvilinear coordinate system and the same vector being expressed in a different curvilinear coordinate system. And of course, no surprise, based upon what happened in the last video when you take these derivatives, they do not form the components of a tensor. So the question then is, if we have a vector or a tensor, is there a, differ is there a way that we can differentiate the components so that when you go through the differentiation process, you get another tensor that comes out of it? And that is what is uh, covariant differentiation is all about. And then that's what we'll start to discuss in the next video. So. Come back and join us for that video and we'll continue along here with our discussion.